before we jump into this real world review, if you haven't signed up for the Fronos Photo email list, you can do so. Just look for this orange box over on the website, put your name, email address in it, hit send it, and I'll send you a free guide to capturing motion in low light situations. Jared Poland, Fronos Photo. Com, here with another real world review for you and this time we have the Canon 7D Mark II. What will I be shooting? Well, I'm going to shoot the Philadelphia Flyers playing the Edmonton Oilers because what is a better way to test out a sports camera than to shoot a hockey game? Because we'll be able to shoot at 10 frames a second because that's what this camera does as well as use those 65 focus points that are all cross-type sensors. So who's the camera for? They're saying it's for sports shooters. They're also saying it's for nature photographers. One of the reasons is you have that 1.6 times crop factor, which makes this 70 to 200. Well, out of 200, it makes it a 320 millimeter, or it takes this 302.8 and makes it a 482.8 equivalent. So if you're a birder or if you're a sports shooter, this could be for you. And also it has solid, solid weather sealing. So what am I out here to test out first and foremost? The speed. How is it? Uh, capturing those 10 frames a second. How is the autofocus? We know the ISO is most likely going to be locked in because we're shooting hockey. I've already shot a concert with the camera, so we'll have some low light comparisons for you for that. But really, it's about getting those settings locked in and then using the power of this camera to try to track the autofocus and get those 10 frames a second or just get those quick bursts to get those awesome images. So I can't wait to see what we get in this real world review. So let's go and do it. Warm-ups, right? Pretty cool being down here on the bench to shoot the 7D Mark II. So from time to time, I'm gonna jump into this real world review and give you guys some thoughts on the camera as I'm actually shooting. So one of the first things that I really liked about this camera is the different cases. They call them cases for setting your autofocus. Whether you wanna say, shoot a tennis player where you've just locked the focus on them pretty much in continuous and it's not gonna get distracted by anything in the background. I love what these Canons do, uh, how they give you all these different options for different scenarios that you may be in for using your autofocus. That's something that is really awesome in these cameras. is fast. 10 frames a second is blazing fast. Now, I didn't know whether I would like that or not, but really it's for quick burst, especially for the hockey game. You know, those two, three shots in a row, those four shots where you're getting that quick burst of action going by, that's what 10 frames a second is all about. It's not really about holding down the shutter for 10, uh, for a second, for two seconds and getting 20 shots. It's not about making movies. It's about getting quick bursts. So when the goalie's going to make a save, boom, boom, or a guy's taking a slap shot, you can go through the slap shot and get all of the shots that you're looking for with that rapid fire secession.
So here's something I don't like about the 7D Mark II. It has a three inch screen. I don't understand how it has only a three inch screen when most cameras are putting out today are 3.2 inches. So it's a little smaller than what I expected and it's also not touch screen. Now I know they have just the 70D that does that, but having the dual point AF for video is fantastic when you can touch the screen. Now we didn't shoot video today at this game, but it's just something I wish we had here was a active touch screen like in the 7D and the, uh, the lower end Rebels that they have. So one of the main things that everybody wants to know about the 7D Mark II is how is the autofocus? Well, it has 65 cross-type sensors, and I can tell you that they are freaking fantastic. For hockey, it was unbelievable. I'm gonna refer back to my notes because I wanna get this right. I used, for part of the game, the auto selection 65 point AF. That's where it pretty much is like, with the Nikons, it does 3D focus tracking. It's where the you, you can pick a spot, and then the focus goes ahead and bounces around and, and finds the subject that you wanna lock in on. Now, it worked very well for most of the game uh, until it focused in on the background on one of the goals and I missed so that's why I switched off into a more tighter pattern but really I think it handled itself very very well it would be great for action sports it would be definitely be great for trying uh, to shoot birds or things in nature that's where that great AF point is going to come in handy but one of the things I don't like about the AF points is that they don't stay actively lit red now you can get them to turn red, but they turn red only when you are moving the points. Then then they turn off and just stay uh, black basically when you are uh, just sitting there. So that's one thing that the Nikon has over this. It's not a deal breaker. The only time it's a major issue is if you're shooting a concert in the dark. Uh, you're basically not gonna be able to see your focus points until you activate them to move them. So when you talk about 10 frames a second, you wanna know how is the buffer in this camera? Well, it's really, really good. I was shooting in RAW plus JPEG fine because we can't edit the RAW files just yet, and I did not outrun this camera at all. I believe at one point I pushed it to its limit, which was, I believe, 19 shots in a row, and then I just waited for two or three seconds, and the buffer was completely empty again, ready to shoot. So you're really, if you're just taking a couple of shots here and a couple of shots there, you're never gonna outrun this camera, even shooting RAW and even shooting RAW plus JPEG large at the same time. So really, really nice and fast. I'm using the compact flash card in here. Uh, I don't know how it is with the SD, but I would assume that if you're using a faster SD card, it's probably gonna be just as good. So that's very nice function here in the 7D Mark II. So here's a minor issue. It's more nitpicking than anything else, but you see how the info screen is on? With some of the lower end cameras, when you put your eye up to it, the info screen turns off because there's a proximity sensor. Well, there isn't one here, so you just have to, you can manually turn it off, but there's those times where I wanna take a look at it and see what it says, and it just, it kind of annoys me when I'm trying to shoot, especially if you're shooting a concert or something in low light and you get this bright light here, but it's dark through the viewfinder. It's, very, it's pretty hard to use. That's nitpicking, not a deal breaker, just something that I wish they had in this cap. A lot of people are always curious about how loud the shutter is. Well, I can tell you, it, it doesn't matter so much in a loud situation like the hockey game or the concert, but it's not very loud on the normal settings. It's, um, it's surprisingly quiet for a 10 frame a second camera where if you were shooting the 1DX, it sounds like rockets going off. This is pretty not bad at all, but it also has a silent mode. You can shoot four frames a second in the silent mode and it's pretty 
freaking quiet. So that's gonna be good if you're shooting out in nature and you don't wanna scare Bambi away because you're trying to shoot Bambi or whatever you're trying, oh wait, you're not shooting, but you're shooting Bambi with a camera with your lens, you're not shooting with a gun. So in that case, you won't scare Bambi away because the silent mode is pretty darn good. Didn't matter here tonight, but it would matter out there in the woods. So here's a function that the 7D Mark II has that the 5D Mark III doesn't have. Uh, you have the ability to have my menu, but to have three tabs, not just one. So that means you can put battery info in it. You can have your image size and turn the beep off and different focusing modes, but you can have three different menu systems. That is really good to have. They're just, they're, they're quick places to put what you use the most often into my menu. Right before the game, I was playing with something and I noticed that when you change the ISO to a lower number versus a higher number, that the amount of images that you have left on the card change. That's not something I've ever seen in a Nikon and it's the first time I've actually seen it in the Canon. That's a pretty interesting thing to know that you're using less data at lower ISO. So keep that in mind that as you're shooting at higher ISOs, you're gonna chew up more data. So while I was shooting the game, I was really blown away by how good the autofocus system was, how fast it found the subject you were trying to get, how fast it went from one guy to the next guy to the next guy, and how it picked up things that I didn't even think were there. It just tracks subjects extremely well. Now I haven't seen the images on a computer just on the three inch smaller screen right here, and I can't wait to see them later and, and in post tell you what I think about it, but based off of how they worked here at the game, really, really pleased. I don't think there's a Nikon camera that has kept up with it. Uh, that I've shot and I really think that this thing for a uh, crop sensor camera is going to be great for sports and it's going to be great for nature. So right before I give you my final thoughts and throw this back to the studio, uh, one thing I noticed about the battery life is that it's atrocious. I'm at 30% and I've taken 669 pictures. That means somewhere around 1,000 pictures the battery's gonna be dead and I didn't even shoot video. Could you imagine if you were shooting video mixed in with photos? You're just gonna chew through these batteries like they're water. So that's just something that I'm, I'm not too happy with is that the battery life is pretty darn atrocious. But other than that, this camera has been a joy to shoot, especially for shooting hockey. It's fast at 10 frames a second. The focus is tremendous. The functions of the camera seem to work very, very well. And the images really look nice on the back of the screen. But we've got to take it back home into the studio to determine whether the shots are keepers or not and to give you my final thoughts on this camera. And that's what we're going to do now. So let's go back into the studio. So here we are back in the loft to go ahead and take a look at some of these images from the Canon 7D Mark II. Now I shot two things. I shot the Philadelphia Flyers, which is obviously great for testing out action and autofocus. And I also shot a concert, a Pete Yorn concert in very low light situations. Now remember, uh, I was shooting RAW plus JPEG, but at this point, Adobe hasn't updated any of their software to allow me to open up the CR2 files. I did go into DPP, which is Canon's uh, software for editing RAW files. It is an atrocious program to try to operate, in my opinion. It's not very intuitive, so I didn't sit there to edit them, but the JPEG finds for the purposes that we're using them for are, are perfectly fine. I'm also gonna upload some of those CR2s so that when you can edit them, you'll be able to, uh, or when, when Adobe does accept them, you'll be able to go ahead and edit them. But I'm also gonna put up all of the photos that I took, good, bad, indifferent, they're going up. Um, let's see, is it all of them or is it all the ones I edited? Because I took 669 at the hockey game. I'll probably put up all of the ones that I edited. So we'll put that up and we'll put up all the concert ones so you can take a look there. So so some of the things at the game, I thought the thing focused extremely well in that in that 65 point auto mode where it selected the focus points for me. I haven't really shot like that in the Nikons because I wasn't too happy with how the Nikon 3D focusing worked in the past, how it sometimes maybe would find the guy's skate 
uh, instead of finding his face or chest. And, and that's not a good thing when you're shooting sports. If, if it's finding the skate and not the face and one of them's in focus and the other isn't, that's not a win. But with the Canon inside the, uh, the camera, even when you're using those uh, 65 points to allow to automatically select it, you can still select a certain area of vicinity to keep the focus point in so that it's going to hunt for it in the right area. And I think 90-some percent of the time, it worked really well. Uh, near the middle of the game, I switched over to the couple of boxes that were more in the middle for the focus, but I think it handled very well. Now, everything on the back of the three-inch screen looked good, uh, but again, one of the things that, that throws me off is the fact that it is a three-inch screen and not something larger. Now, yes, 3.2 isn't much larger, but it's what everybody else is using is a 3.2, and again, not a touchscreen, so for the video that I shot of Pete Yorn, I would have liked to have a touchscreen so that I could tell it where to focus when I was doing it. Um, but really, let, let's jump into the images, because there are there's some concerns that I have. Now, they're minor concerns. They're not major concerns, and it's not like Canon do, uh, Nikon doesn't have its issues on its side. So do not take this as uh, I'm a Nikon fanboy or anything. I'm looking at this camera for exactly what it is. So let, let's take a look. One of the things that I thought I had subtle issues were, with was tight, tight focus. Now, when it hits... It is solid and it's really good. But in this case, and this isn't pixel peeping too far. I mean, you know, we're zoomed in one to one here, and I kind of tell people not to pixel peep and, and use that as the end all and be all of the camera. It's just that this guy isn't moving. He's stretching on the ice, and I'm looking for a sharp point. Is it are that the laces? Is it the hands? I mean, it, it. I'm focused on his face, and it just. It seems that it, and I've noticed this with Canons that there's sometimes that subtle hint of just being out, just not where it should be sharp as hell. But I've had it on the other end where it's been sharp as hell with the 1DX, and you'll see it with the, with the 7D Mark II that there's times where it's just tack right on. And I noticed it with the concert stuff where it just, I'll get into that after this, but, you know, I didn't want to take too much time talking about this, but I think it's important to talk about these images in more detail so you can get some information about it. Again, shooting at 1 1250th of a second at 3.5 is giving myself enough leeway. Using a 70 to 200 2.8 version 2 with the IS on, it shouldn't, it, it should be better. But then when you zoom out, nobody's going to know the difference. So it's not like it's far off. And I will tell you that on the Nikon side, I've had major back focusing issues with a lot of the cameras, especially even, even the D4. When that thing came out, I, part, I think it was a combination of an older lens, my 24-70 to 70 going uh, and just slipping and missing, or and a combination of the focus. I just didn't like it on that camera. But let's go through this a little quicker. Here's a prime example. We're going to zoom in here, and we're going to see that neither of this area is in tack sharp focus. And this is where I'm using single focus point to focus. But then on the next shot, boom, you can see the difference. Look at his eyes right here. You see how they're, they're, they don't look pixelated and grainy. And he didn't, do, he, they're not moving, right? I'm the one moving to get the better frame. Now the black and whites look great, even editing the, the JPEGs, but, but that's just that subtle thing. It's like, wow, it hit here, yet it missed on this one when he had more of his face to show, and I'm focusing on the eye. It's just one of those subtle things that I noticed with the camera, and I don't know, maybe you guys have seen this in the past or not, but, you know, wide open ice, this is fine. I still want it to be a little, to feel a little more sharp, but here, we're looking at the JPEG in the background. This is, uh, what are we at? We're at 1600 ISO. This is perfectly acceptable. I know there's other reports out there that, that, are, that are panning the camera and saying that it's like a five-year-old camera at lower ISOs and things like that, but it works well at high ISOs. I'm here to shoot pictures. I'm here to capture the moment. I think that the Canon has, the 7D Mark II has done a fantastic job all the way around to do that. This is 1600 ISO. It looks great. Even the JPEGs look fine. I still want to edit the raw files because I know I can pull more out of it. So let's let's just blow through this a little more. This is a wider angle using an EFS lens. Uh, what is it? The 10 to 22. So that's a 3.5 to 4.5 lens. Just something different to shoot at, down on the ice because that's what you have to do to get really wide with this camera. But look at this. Look at how sharp this is when you zoom in. You know, you see the difference? You see the sharpness of the stick and the sharpness of the eyes and the helmet? What is the difference? And look at the shirt. Is it because he's flat straight on? I don't know. And then you get to the Voracek shot, and it's like, oh, his head's not there. And sure, some people may say, well, the shutter speed and the, and the motion. Look, at 1250th of a second, you're going to freeze the motion. All right, keep moving. Uh, this was pitch dark, by the way. 
pitch really pitch back during the uh, the singing of the national anthem. I bumped it to ten thousand ISO, trying to lock in focus somewhere. It's not super duper tack sharp at those high ISOs. But let me tell you, it was really freaking dark out there. Then you get a shot like this from up top of the 300, extremely sharp. Um, I picked this one just because Jack over here shooting photos shouldn't be hiding from getting hit because he's behind the glass. And this punk over here should not be on his cell phone in the front row of a hockey game. Put your phone away, douchebag. Okay. Now back to the review. Uh, look at the sharpness when you get down to this. I mean, the guy's trying to wrap around and put the puck in here, but Mason has his pad up against the net, uh, up against the post, and everything is tack on this one. So spot on with that autofocus was doing an awesome job. You know how great it is when the camera, I mean, I'm not a big fan of a lot of those auto modes, and I do shoot autofocus, and I like to move the focusing points, but this 65 point AF where it was automatically moving around, and I could pinpoint where I kind of wanted it to focus on when I I say focus on, but those certain, which focus points, but it still bounced around. It did a great job finding where it was going to go, but also sometimes it misses with the background. Very rarely, but it looked good. So both of these guys are up off the ice. This girl's busy eating uh, crab fries back there, but looks good. Let's just blow through these much quicker. Uh, focusing in probably on this guy, and this is action stuff in front of the net that you want to look for, guys. See, and, and look, even at 1250th of a second, we're still freezing the puck. Where's my mouse? There's my mouse. It's not completely frozen, but it's not a blur mess. And you got to think that the puck is coming in anywhere between, if it's a wrist shot, 70 miles, 60, 70 miles an hour. A slap shot, you're looking at upwards of 100 miles an hour. But this is great action in front of the net. This is good, too, you know, following the action, getting those couple shots, using those 10 frames a second to snap them off quicker. Again, looks good. It's just missing just a smidgen. I want it tighter. I want it tighter, and I don't know what it is. But it's not bad. But then you get this again. Here we go. Super sharp. I mean, look at that. Awesome. So let's just blow through these because I want to show you some other stuff. You can look at all these files. So that's just because he's sitting. One of my favorite shots of the game. This is what you look for in front of the net is the players to draw you into the goalie so that you have him right there. That's what, that's what works. And then this one's sharp. You know, it did it great on him. Look at him. You see the difference, what I'm saying? It's like I'm not changing anything other than just continuing to shoot, and, it's and the focus is following it, but this is tack, whereas the other one, just, it just seems like an un just under tack. Just a face-off, going through with those 10 frames a second. You can see how you, you, can, you can get those shots, stealing the puck, guy going up the boards, very nice action shot. Uh, all the players in front of the net. Guy shedding some ice here on Mason, and then... Oh, I forgot. I got to get. I got to hit the green button. Why didn't? Oh, I hit yellow, not green. Hold on. There were some other shots I wanted to show you guys. So let me find all the green ones here real quick. So this is uh, tracking the focus. The focus tracking. So let's go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. I normally wouldn't do that, but I wanted to test it out and see how the focus would continue to do it. Where this one's on, as I pull back because he's going to score. This one it missed focus. This one it missed focus. This one it missed focus. You can see that he's shooting the puck. You can see it's in the back of the net here, but it's out of focus. We missed. I missed. And I'm on a Dutch angle because I'm shooting through that hole. Didn't like it so much. But then you go like this, and this guy, there's a guy that starts to skate through right here. Here he misses, and then for some reason the camera picks it up, and it's like, holy crap. That's pretty cool that the camera does stuff like that. Um, let's find some of those other ones. So we got this going, this guy coming up the ice. It's tracking him pretty well, pretty close. And then we got this guy going to the net tracking him for a while all these are up there this is it, you know it's not as sharp as I want it to be like I said but it's th something that only I'm noticing uh you may notice it in the files as well but the 10 frames a second are blazing fast the 10 th they do it really well and here's a slap shot perfect opportunity to show the 10 frames a second boom 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 bend of the stick release of the puck and go wish I was over just a little more so that he wasn't exactly in the center so his follow-through could shoot uh, to show better but I think it worked out really well. It was a nice shot. And then you've got uh, Len Redkulls, the Flyers photographer. I saw him doing this, and I asked him the next day, what were you doing? He's like, taking a stock shot of the ice. You know, that's actually true. People sometimes look for those stock shots. Now, before we jump into the, uh, the final, final review, let me show you the, uh, the couple shots here. Now, this is a JPEG small because I had it set to that at first when I was shooting raw, and it's very nice and uh, locked in right here at 5,000 ISO. And then we go up to... 800 ISO, 
And you, you see what I'm saying, how it's not uber fantastically like tack? Now, these are horrible. Uh, well, this is 12,800, one eight hundredth of a second. You see how it's not overly tack sharp? Now, it's not bad at all. And 12,800 in a crop sensor is freaking fantastic. Uh, and then we move to 16,000. You know, he's not moving, and he should be tack sharp. For some reason, it's focused here. And I was in single point AF, selecting it. Uh, not in servo this time, selecting where I wanted it, focusing right on his face, and it's, it's missing. I don't know what that is about. Again, very usable at 16,000, which is the top of the line, but I'm not sharp there. It was more sharp. Not, in this one, I, it looks like it just missed. Um, and this is 10,000 ISO. Here is the example of what I'm saying. It's not super duper tight in the face. Uh, and this one is a little more tight, but it's just, it, it's partly the lighting that's going on. And then this is what throws me off. All the way back at 6,400 ISO, um, shooting from the back, his face should be freaking tight. He's not moving. And I'm focusing right on him, and it's not, and we're only 6,400. It's not in that tightness area. Now, yes, we're zooming in pretty far, but, you know, with some of those ones that you saw of the hockey players, they were super tight, and it just misses from time to time. Or it's just, it's not that it misses, it's just that it's off by a smidgen. Now, that's not a deal breaker. And like I've said, this I've kind of talked longer than I wanted to talk. Uh, it's not like the Nikons don't have their issues. Is this a deal breaker in this camera? Absolutely not. I can live, you know, I'm all about tack sharp, yes. I can live with the way that this focus is looking. Um, it's just, it's just, it just gets at me a little bit that, that you're in the right area for the focus. You're doing the right things. You're putting the focus point where it should go. Your settings are pretty much right. And then it's not super tack sharp like, like the two differences between this one. It's like I, and generally speaking, I don't focus on the far away eye. I focus on the close eye. So I'm not sure if it's some tweaking you need to do in the camera. I'm not a big fan of the manual, uh, the, the manual tweaks that have to go on um, for, for, for the focusing. I think that if you buy a camera that's 1800 bucks, you spend the money on a $2,400 lens, that the damn stuff should be calibrated and be right on. Look, fantastic little camera. I'm going to wrap it up right now. You're going to see me sitting over in the other side of the studio wrapping it up. But really, those are the sample images. You can check them out on the site, and that's where we'll leave it. So let me throw it back to myself over on the other side of this wall. So I wanted to jump in here real quick and let you know that what you just saw was me editing the JPEG files because at the time when I was doing the review, uh, Photoshop and Lightroom weren't updated yet to open the CR2 file. So at the time, those are what I was editing. But I've had a chance to go back and edit some of the raw files, the CR2s, in Adobe Lightroom. And the subtleness of the focus is still out, except the only difference is it just tells me how bad the JPEGs are, that if you have uh, in-camera noise reduction on at all, that it's going to smooth out the files and make them look less sharp than what they really are. But I did analyze some of the images and when I looked at them, they still are subtly out even though uh, I'm looking at the raw file. So what I'm looking at is just sharper grain but the image has still slipped a little bit. So I still hold true to that. But what I've done is I've uploaded some DNG files that are exported from Lightroom so that you can go ahead and analyze the files yourself to see the quality that is still there. So I still think it's a, a fantastic camera and the raw files, I gotta say, are so much nicer to work with than the JPEGs. But for the review purposes, I think the point was made that the, uh, the full exported JPEGs from the camera are perfectly fine to take a look at. But when you're going and making images yourself, I do highly highly recommend using the raw files because they do look so much better than the full res JPEG straight out of the camera. So let's wrap this one up. So now it's time to wrap up the Canon 7D Mark II review and I want to let you know that we are recording this video right now with the 7D Mark II with a 50mm 1.2 from Canon. Now you've seen me out on location in the real world situations shooting the hockey game. You've seen some sample images from a concert at high ISO and you've seen the results from the hockey photos. Now I just want to wrap it up and give you my final thoughts on everything. It is a solid beast of a camera. I haven't seen autofocus work so well when I was shooting with the continuous 65 point AF uh, compared to the Nikon side. I think that the focus was great 
for shooting the sports. Um, but like I said, when we got the photos into the computer, at some points, it just seems to lack that little sharpness oomph. And I've seen that on some other Canons, like the 70D was great for video, but it seemed to lack that sharpness. You know, when you put that focus point right where you know it should be in focus and the subject isn't moving and it just doesn't have that sharpness. Now it's a subtle thing. And from what I'm hearing from talking to other Canon shooters is that it's something they've noticed as well. And I don't know if maybe I need to do the manual corrections inside the camera to, to calibrate the lenses or not. That, that may be a, an option to do, but I still come from the school of that when I buy something new, it should be great out of the box. Now, I'm not downplaying this camera at all. I think it's a fantastic camera. Again, at $17.99, it's, it's pretty pricey. The battery life for me was atrocious, as I talked about before. But let's look one more time at who it's for. You have your nature photographers because you get that extra 1.6 reach. You also have the weather ceiling, which is great for those people out shooting nature. And the sports photographers who have the 1DX, but also want to have a secondary camera for either using on a remote uh, to trigger it, or they just want that extra reach because I thought the quality was pretty good. Shooting the hockey game at the ISO that I did and getting the, uh, the speeds that I got, I thought the quality was very, very good. Um, now, I wasn't ab able to edit the RAW files because Adobe hasn't updated yet, but I did open some of the, the CR2 files in the Canon software, the DPP, and they look fine. They still lack that sharpness that I was looking for, but you know, I edited the JPEG files and that was fine for the review purposes. If I'm shooting for a job, or actually if I'm shooting anything, it's always going to be in RAW no matter what. But this camera handled extremely well. If you're a sports shooter, you're going to like that 1.6 extra reach. The high ISO capability looks very good. Now if you want to compare it on the Nikon side really quick, Canon at the higher side tends to have a, a less film grain look where the Nikon has that extra sharpness up high. But these are subtle differences, subtle things that if you're already invested in Canon, you're going to love the 7D Mark II uh, if you're shooting the and if you're shooting the landscapes. I don't think it's a wedding camera. I don't think it's much of a portrait camera. That doesn't mean that you can't use it for those. And I think it would do us a, a great job with it. Now, I know some other places out there have talked about comparing it to older cameras. I don't do that. I make sure that it's in the real world. And I think it handled very well in the real world. I love the Canon glass. You can't go wrong with the 70 to 200 2.8 IS. That worked amazing for the hockey shots. It worked great for the concert shots. And for hand holding for video, it was very good. Now, if you're trying to decide between a, if you're looking for a camera that's going to be strictly video versus stills, well, I would look at a 70D if you're looking for video because of the rotating screen and the touch screen for that dual pixel AF is going to be fantastic. It's much harder to move the pixels, uh, the, the focus points for this camera, the 7D Mark II, when you're trying to do the focus. But man, did it track well when we were tracking the DJI Inspire 1. It followed it in autofocus in video like I haven't seen before. Nikon has nothing that compares to that. So that was great for this dual pixel AF in this camera. So if you're looking for it for still first and video second, I think it's going to be a nice little option for you guys to choose uh, right there. So like I said, you've got the full res JPEG exports. There are some raw files. Now when they are able to be opened, you'll be able to open them. Or if you have DPP already updated, you can go ahead and edit those files for yourself. But this is a solid, solid offering. Uh, personally, I'd stick with a 1DX, but if you needed to only spend 1800 bucks, I think this would be a fantastic camera for what it offers you. Very happy with the results. Like the photos that I got, really love the focus for the hockey. Just got to figure out what that little subtleness is when, it, when it's off just by a little. I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's just me, but if anybody else has information about that, please let me know. But that's it, guys. That is a real-world review of the Canon 7D Mark II. Hope you'd enjoyed it. And that is all I have to say. Jared Poland, froknowsphoto.com. See ya. So I hope you enjoyed that real world review of the Canon 7D Mark II. Please subscribe to the YouTube channel so you can get the latest videos as they come available. And if you want to check out any of the educational products I have, go ahead, click up on any one of them on the screen to see a preview of what they are. At least it's not loud. You're good to go by. Thank you. Thanks. It's better than the guy hitting the mallet last time. That was fun. You guys, some insight onto some of the findings I'm, I'm really finding with the camera. Can I say findings twice? From time to time, oops, oops. So a lot of people are, so a lot of people are, blah.
Now here's a function 